as most of you are probably aware, um, Gina Carano, an actress that was in The Mandalorian. She was fired from her job back in 2021 um, after posting some, you know, fairly controversial social media um, content. Um, been fairly quiet since then, but now oh, she is a woman scorned and she's come back for revenge against Disney and she's launched a lawsuit against them for wrongful termination, um, backed financially by Elon Musk, which is kind of an interesting development, I suppose. Mm. And, you know, everyone and uh, every man and their dog has been talking about this one on YouTube already, but I think it's an interesting one to, to cover because it's such an important, uh, I guess, development in... Um, Disney's <laughs> current like self-destruction, I suppose, um, where she has probably got a case on this one, um, mm -hmm. not just from the fact that she was wrongfully terminated uh, on the basis that she holds beliefs or political opinions that the company doesn't agree with, which I don't think is grounds to terminate someone, but also the fact that they slandered her um, and publicly defamed her. Uh, mm. which is a pretty solid basis to launch a lawsuit against someone. And I think she might actually win this one, or at least they might settle out of court because, um, I don't know, man, I cannot see this going to discovery where they have to divulge <laughs> internal emails uh, relating to Gina Carano. Uh, that seems like it would be very embarrassing for the company, <laughs> and there's probably a whole lot of stuff that they said about her that they do not want the public to see. Oh, okay, especially I in the lead this. up to that abhorrent yeah, we'll comment. Thought, yeah. On that, no, that in particular about about it not going to uh, discovery, but instead uh, being settled. I think they'll, that Disney will make so many attempts to do that, but that each time Elon will encourage Gina not to settle and say, "Take this to the take this to the end." Kind of like what happened with the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case is that this is not about the money. This is about revealing the truth. That the truth needs to out immediately, and, and I and I think that will be so important in sort of changing the tide in how Disney is perceived. Well, I think well, if you get a financial settlement out of court, it doesn't clear your name necessarily, and I think this is the big problem that she's presumably had this cloud over her for the past three years, where she yeah. was publicly insulted by Disney and called. Um, all kinds of you know insults about her her um, per, her, her character um, her willingness to to attack marginalized groups and so on uh, that's the sort of thing that you have to get a retraction on you have to get a public apology uh, mm. in order to clear your name and that I guess is would be the the thing that she's aiming for with this lawsuit the money is not going to be as important as that what, there's also question, what though. Twitter is after like Twitter wants to create a world where nobody dares harm you or your career for what you say on Twitter because you are actively damaging their website. And so the entire reason behind the lawsuit is that if you punish someone for what they say on Twitter, then we will come after you. It is about sending the message that you should not yes. do this to people who send messages on our platform. Because um, I, I fully I fully agree with the idea that like a company can't be forced to employ people like if say they're not needed anymore they're not pulling their weight okay like they need to be let go but there's a difference between that and just firing someone arbitrarily because you don't agree with what they said hmm. in off hours when you're not employed by the company like if you're doing yes. it on work hours then obviously you're representing the company but if you're saying on your personal account in personal time it's got nothing to do with them yeah I mean, this didn't this kind of already happen to James Gunn? Then he came back when they fired him because of the other tweets that he had. I mean, it's even with Jane Gina Carano. I'm always wondering, like, can she? Like, I'm, obviously, I don't know much about legal stuff, so I'm just like, I'm just asking the question: Can she legally get the company to take her back? Like, is that that doesn't seem like that could? Would really you happen. want? I, to? I don't believe. That I know. Would you want, want to? Go back? I, don't, I don't think so. With them again? No, yeah, I think she would. She would absolutely refuse to work for them ever again. I believe. I have because, yeah, like, yeah. But they would they would they would, they would they would they would hire her and then what write her off I, in the next scene it would be her like, I, I've, going I've back heard to that company. I've, I've heard rumors and I'm not gonna divulge my source, but um I've heard rumors that before this went public, Disney knew that this lawsuit was coming and John Favreau contacted her and said that if we were to bring you back into the Mandalorian, would you let this one go? Hmm. And apparently the response was nope. <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it's about more than that. Like you say, it's about like sending a message. 
Well, uh, also, okay. it's like you have already been mistreated by this company. You know well, what they're like. You know what they wanted. They wanted you to go through a struggle session of 45 different people who just mm. insult you publicly, who could then record it and would likely leak it to everybody else to damage your reputation further because they're not interested in giving you a fair hearing. They're interested in punishing you. And y you, why would anyone want to go back to that horrific work yeah. environment? Yeah. Particularly yeah. with the Mandalorian season three being an absolute shit show, anyway, like <laughs> it's it's not really something you want to then be associated it's not with. No, exactly. I likened it to like getting a job opportunity on the Titanic, like two seconds before <laughs> it hits the iceberg. Like yeah. it's not going to do much for your long term prospects. You know? It's more like jumping on the Titanic now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's already sinking. It's a half underwater. It's like, I've got a really <laughs> unreliable submarine that I can get you down there with. Oh, it isn't it crazy how they're making a movie now for it with like the worst title ever, The Mandalorian and Grogu. Exactly. Which, that's, yeah. that's that's it's, their master plan. Yeah. They've already shit the bed with that show, and so nobody wants this. So fuck knows if that will even happen at this like, point. Like this is the but... thing, though. This is why, like, I don't understand why they're doing this because the last time they made a movie on a big franchise that needed like Disney Plus homework, it was the Marvels, and it did horribly. Yeah. So why are you doing it again with Star Wars? They should because just release the Mandalorian they're, they're and Grogu on. This, you know, this is what happens every time there's a big earnings call or a big financial report coming up. Uh, Lucasfilm will announce a whole bunch of fascinating Star Wars projects that never actually get made and never had any intention of getting made. And then, you know, it, it's enough to satiate the investors, the people who are worried about their output. Uh, and then after the earnings call or the financial report has passed, those things will just get quietly cancelled so that no one has to think about it. I did it. find it interesting, though, that Disney announced all these things like, uh, you know, like Moana 2 and whatever, and the whole $1.5 billion investment in Fortnite and all that. Oh, we'll get to that. Like, Don't worry. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, they do like, they, they announce all these things within like a day or two of Gina Carano doing her lawsuit thing. I thought that was very interesting. Well, it was, um, it was the same deal with um, them announcing John Favreau directing a Mandalorian and Grogu movie after the um, Ray movie and all the controversy about Charmino Bay Chinoy. Like, we've got to take headlines away from this. What will get some sort of interest? Hey, John Favreau's coming back and he's directing a movie and it's going to be about the Mandalorian, the only semi-popular character that we have left. You know, okay, great, but it's just a deflection, really. Like, we all know it's not really a serious project. Um, yeah. But the, the thing that interests me i guess is what elon musk's stake in this is and it you know i i don't want to apportion really petty motivations to like billionaires but it seems <laughs> sure like it, it. it literally is just a giant fuck you to bob Iker. i think yeah. it's literally just you cut disney advertising on twitter it's really hurt our bottom line so i'm gonna fucking destroy your bottom line at the same time and if it means just launching a lawsuit against you sure i'll do it because it honestly seems like he timed that to perfection right before the Disney earnings call when mm -hmm. Bob was going to be on the, the hotline and he was going to get questions about this. He just wanted to make him sweat and he wanted to do it any way that he could. And this seems like a pretty effective way of achieving that aim. But it's two birds, one stone, because he, he was in contact with a lot of people which have suffered from, like, Kara. Uh, he was in contact with her when she got fired for comments mm. that she made on Twitter. So this was a long time coming, and it was a message that he wanted to send. And I think he's the kind of person where if it lines up, something else lines up with, so, um, like, he's got a grudge or whatever it is, alongside an actual real-life problem that he can solve, then that's just better. And he will choose the best example. And I don't think there is a better example than what you have here. Because she can literally list off in court all the other things that Disney have done, which are either similar or worse than anything she could have possibly have said to their bottom line or their customers. She-Hulk literally had the fans in their show as the villains and the evil bad guys. And they were right. proud of it and bragged about it to everybody. And it's like, what, you, you're going to say that that was more damaging to your bottom line than somebody who made a, an offhand comment that had nothing to do with your customers at all, but you tried to insinuate it was? Yeah, and I, I think I can understand why there's this feeling that this is petty, because obviously, yes, Disney pulling, pulling advertising is a big deal for, for X. But I also see that Elon is a man who cannot be bought. First of all, he is incredibly rich. And... I don't, I think all the sort of 
culture overlords that want to keep this like tight grip on how everybody should think like at Disney, like at these, you know, traditional media places, they're trying to understand why he can't be controlled. And even that, that interview that he did two months ago with that New York times person, where he, the guy's asking him, you know, don't you yeah. want to be trusted? Don't you want to be liked? You know, isn't it a bad thing that you're losing advertisers? And he says, no, why, why should money influence my opinions? And I think, when he's seen this opportunity with Gina Carano um, and Disney, he wants to take the big, you know, elephant down that is that is manipulating a lot of people's thinking. It's influencing a lot of people into believing all this DEI nonsense. And he wants to take that out. There's an I, interesting I so. thing with uh, prison movies where it's like, the first thing they do is they choose the biggest guy and they go and punch him in the face to prove that they can't be messed with. And in Gina's statement, she said, Disney is the largest entertainment company in the world. It is, and so it is literally choosing the Goliath of everybody and going, if I can take you, I can take the rest of you. You probably yeah. shouldn't do this to the people. I, I think you know, as well, like Elon has made no secret of the fact that he's quite invested in the whole, like the whole culture war thing. And he absolutely despises, um, the SJWs, for lack of a better term, the woke mind virus, as he calls it. Mm. And, you know, he is fully committed to destroying that. That's partly why he bought over Twitter. Mm. You know, he saw it was utterly infested with that. It was negatively impacting the public discourse. And he decided he was going to step in and and um, and intervene there. And his solution was like, fine, I'm just going to throw a fuck ton of money at it and buy it out. Straight yeah. up, because I'm the richest man on the planet, and I can just I, do I, that through honestly sheer believe that financial muscle. I honestly believe that Elon Musk buying Twitter is a big reason why a lot of things are changing nowadays. It's because we finally have a place where we can talk yes. with free speech. Well, yes. my, yes. So my point is yes. though, like the, he his first step is like I'm going to um, buy up the biggest platform for public discourse on the planet, yeah. like Twitter, like for for social media, uh, and. Theoretically, I'm going to purge it of like these these biased elements to make it more free and open for people to just have honest discussions. The second step is I'm going to influence entertainment, or I'm going to like buy up one of the biggest entertainment companies um, on the planet that used to stand for, um, I guess, what was Disney? It was about family values. It was about Americana. It was about patriotism. It was about good old fashions. You know. Um, trad values yeah traditional yeah. values um, and it's now become something very very different and it's become a platform for people to just preach political crap at you i'm going to buy I up that and i'm going to free it of this nonsense as well it's all aspects of cultural influence that he perceives as a problem that he's trying to tackle mm -hmm. i will say it makes I think sense in that context i think it's bigger than entertainment i think it's more down to your job like, it is, if you fire people for what they say in a career, then I will go after you. Um, because that is one of the main reasons that there will be loads of people in Disney, in Hollywood, in entertainment, who disagree with what's going on, but they don't want to speak up because it will cost them their jobs. And they will yeah. lose their house, they'll lose their family, their, their careers, and their, the kids. They, they have people that need that job, and so they won't speak up. And so it is about sending the message that you can um, say what you think, and the company cannot come after you to punish you for your opinion. That's the message. So it, it goes a bit further than just entertainment. If that becomes like a standard, then it goes across every single industry and in every career and every company. Would be well, a it's going to set impact. a precedent, really. If he wins on this one, like say this lawsuit wins, that is going to be massive because it sets a precedent for other people within Hollywood who want to express their opinions freely on social media without fear mm -hmm. of... Uh, without fear of being fired without fear of censorship. Um, and that's an important thing. And yeah, as uh, Zvush was saying here, wasn't he spotted with Nelson Peltz at a Disney function saying yes. something like, I'm looking for a company to buy. <laughs> Again, I <laughs> think that's win. just Elon Beaming. just absolutely shit stirring. Um, but he knew exactly what people were going to say. He knew what the inferences they were going to draw when he was seen there with Nelson Peltz. Uh, and he just decided to feed into it. And, and I he's say, e he was even dressed enough. the same as when he uh, said, go fuck yourself. He had the same jacket on <laughs> and everything. Yeah. <laughs> he just exact same too. He knew he's doing. He knows he's doing. If you were to well, buy like, Disney, he knows though, mean culture. Great. 
I think it would be the oh, funniest yeah. fucking thing if he if he did if he bought oh, Disney and just incredible. fired like eighty percent of the people there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine an MCU Star Wars that were like based and normal? It would make all the money in the world. He'd make his money back no problem. Yeah, I, I, the, he seems like such things. a mad lad. He would just come in and say, "Right, the sequel trilogy is decanonized. Fuck those films. I'm deleting them from from history." <laughs> you know, right. he seems like he would. 